Let us now take a look at some sequences that are partially exact and that will relate the modules of Keller differentials in the case where we have this concatenated setting of an R algebra S over which we have an S algebra T. The first one is the so-called relative cotangent sequence and this will have a geometric meaning that we'll discuss in a minute. The statement is as follows that there is a natural exact sequence of the following T modules. So let's start by looking at the central portion where we have the module of R linear um, Keller differentials over T. So now we look at T as an R algebra, but then this maps into the uh, module of Keller differentials that are S linear. And the map is simply by taking dt here and mapping it to dt. By this definition here, this will kill those dt where t is an s. But uh, everything else works fine. And so we're killing the uh, things that somehow are related to s and so therefore it's natural that we will this implies that we are killing this uh, thing. And what is this thing? These are the R linear differentials over S with a base change to make it into a T module. So here we are uh, mapping T tensor DS to T DS here. And so since the ds are killed in the next step, we have um, the concatenation of these maps, the composition being zero. And one can show that we have exactness at these two positions here. The geometric interpretation is like this. So we think of these omega, say, tr, is as some relative cotangent space. Briefly, the geometric idea is, suppose I have the following situation. So I have here some big variety X mapping down to a variety Y, and I have a point here P and over P, I have the fiber. Then I have three objects. I have the tangent space uh, of X at P or at some point here prime and this maps down so, so that is a plane in this drawing that maps down to the tangent space of uh, P at uh, of, of Y at P and this mapping down well I can express this as saying that it maps to the pullback of the so I pull up the tangent space of uh, uh, y at p. And what's the kernel of this? Well, this is somehow the relative tangent space of, y, of x at y. You can figure out geometrically what this is supposed to mean. And then I get some exact sequence here. And by dualizing, then I get the... Uh, um, the, the, the cotangent sequence. So this pullback corresponds to tensoring with the uh, T should here be my OX of X and S is my OY of Y and R is O 
p of p. So dualizing everything and looking at, at these as functions from the tangent space to um, my field, I get roughly this sequence. And the reason that this is not exact is that exactness here depends on somehow the smoothness of this. So if this geometric description was not helpful, you can forget about it. But this is somehow the meaning of it. It is about relating the tangent space of um, a point on a curve and its uh, tangent space up here, for example. Another uh, sequence is the so-called relative conormal sequence. Now we take t to be s mod j, some ideal j, and then we have the following sequence. So as before, we have this map t uh, tensor ds that maps to uh, tvs. But now we look to the left to this quotient. We have the map delta, and the map delta relates an element j to one tensor d j. So j is an ideal of s, so you can show that this is well defined and makes this into an exact sequence. The uh, reason I brought this up is that there is a special case that we are especially interested in. Namely, if R is a field, our field K, and M in S is a maximal ideal with T being S mod M, so this is isomorphic to K. This is, for example, the case if S is the uh, coordinate ring of an affine variety, M is the maximal ideal of a point, and we're working over an algebraically closed field, then the sequence here becomes this following sequence. And this thing is going to be zero because I have k over k, because both t and r are k. So this means that this delta is surjective. And in fact, one can show that it is injective as well. So uh, delta defines an isomorphism uh, between m mod m squared and k tensor this omega sk. So uh, in other words, this remember that when we define the tangent space, we define the tangent space as the dual of m tensor m squared. And so m tensor m, uh, m mod m squared is the cotangent space. And this shows that the cotangent space is the module of differentials of S viewed as a K module, so a K vector space. So here again, we have this phenomenon of an ideal modulo its square. And this is basically saying that we are linearizing. We are throwing away everything that is the uh, square of something, so we get some linear-looking object. We will be looking more at these uh, modules of differentials in a geometric setting. So let me briefly indicate, without much precision, the geometric setting we will be looking at. So uh, if we have a morphism of affine varieties, then we can make this construction omega s r with s and r the coordinate rings of these affine varieties and we write that omega u over v for short so this is a situation that is exactly the situation we have seen but now if we want to go to arbitrary algebraic varieties that are not necessarily affine then our intuition or our instinct is to try and glue these uh, omega uv into some sheaf of modules over 
x, whatever this means. And this is exactly what one does and it works. So this uh, affine definition of omega globalizes to some definition of a module over a whole algebraic variety. And one thing one can show that is highly non-trivial, that if x and y are smooth irreducible curves and f is separable, then the cotangent sequence is exact. So the cotangent sequence that we had previously, translating it into this uh, setting looks like this. And here I am mixing notation. So I'm mixing this notation where I use in the subscript varieties with the uh, field. So really this should say spec k okay, to be precise. But the point is that I get this exact sequence. So it is exact even. And because of that is largely because of the smoothness. And so this means that omega x y is basically the quotient module of omega x k with f star omega y k. And the one application of this, so this is, all these objects are not yet well defined because we don't know what a module over an algebraic variety is. But assuming that this is well defined and assuming that uh, all of this makes sense, so this omega x y will be uh, significant only at ramification points. So this will correspond to our divisor R from the discussion about the riemann horvitz theorem. And this will correspond to the canonical divisor of X and this will correspond to the pullback of the canonical divisor of Y. All of this can be made precise using the language of quasi-coherent sheaves. If you do that, then by taking degrees and uh, observing the properties of degrees, this will give us precisely uh, the uh, Riemann-Hurwitz formula. So the conclusion is that we need to understand these sheaves of modules and these constructions on sheaves. And this motivates us to leave our familiar world of varieties and in particular curves and go into the more abstract world of sheaves and schemes. And this will be the final part of this course.